here is Abby Sweet. Coaches always wanting to set the tone early in their lineup, and what a better way to do that than to have your returning All-American leading off for you at the top of the lineup. For Tennessee, the impact player is going to come down to Ashley Rogers in the circle. She's somebody who is used to having to shouldering the load for Tennessee. She's going to do that again this season. Fully healthy this year. I know Coach Karen Weekly is excited about that. Her go-to pitch is that rise ball. She gets a ton of spin on it, able to locate it in different spots in the zone, and she's been able to command it at any count. Now she will face off against a fighting Irish lineup that has the All-American Abby Sweet starting things off with this Notre Dame team. But you can't forget about Karina Gaskins as well. Another big bat in the lineup for Deanna Gump's group. And Ashley Rogers starting things off with a strike to Abby Sweet. This group from South Bend, Indiana. I had to leave the cold with a number of other teams to come down to sunny Florida for an early season tournament. Rogers, a part of that USA Softball National Player of the Year watch list, shut him down type of power in the circle. The 0 2 bounces it across now, one ball and two strikes to Abby Sweet. You can see a big smile on the face of Ashley Rogers after that one. One of the things that she's been working on in the offseason coming into this season is an off speed and working the ball down in the zone. Again, that rise ball is her go-to. She likes to work up in the zone, but being able to change levels, change that eye level for a batter is key as you get deep into the season. And strikes out the first batter. The All-American sweep goes down swinging. There's that rise ball jumping up. Look at this late break. So it's coming out of her hand, looking like it's going to stay right about thigh high, and it ends up at the eyeballs of Abby Sweet. That's the pitch that makes Ashley Rogers so effective in the circle. And Rogers' first pitch to Emma Clark is fouled off. Clark, the right fielder, a senior out of Huntington Beach, California. Second team all ACC selection a season ago. Working ahead in the count once more to the first two batters is Rogers. Rogers, who went 2 0 in the opening weekend, point zero zero ERA total 20 strikeouts through 13 innings pitch in the Felsberg Invitational. Yeah, no surprise here again that we're seeing her work that ball up in the zone. If Notre Dame's going to continue to chase at that pitch, you're going to continue to see a steady dose of rise balls out of the hand of Rodgers. We'll see what the Athens native comes back with and rise once more. Fouled off by Clark. Just got a piece of it. It's always tricky for hitters to go up there thinking, don't swing at the rise, because the more you think about that, the more you're probably going to swing at it. So it's all about trying to look for something down in the zone, make Rogers work into that strike zone. She goes down in the zone, and it's ball two. Well, a great start to the year for this Notre Dame group. In fact, their best since the 2011 season where they went 9-0 to start the year. And Deanna Gump sees Emma Clark line out to short for the second out. It's a good adjustment by Clark there, just getting her barrel on top of something. Hit it hard, just went right to Ivy Davis. But thinking back to that start that Notre Dame had last weekend, I really like that they were able to score early in those games. Again, setting the tone, not just from Abby Sweet at the top of the lineup, but also your offense being able to get on the board early gives your pitchers a lot of confidence heading out in the field. Well, they scored 49 runs in that opening weekend, the most for an Irish team. Florida native Leah Hanks out of Leesburg. Now up to the plate with two strikes. Swings into the gap and over the head of the left fielder, Caitlin Parsons, she rounds first base and Hanks is at second base with a two out double. 
This is a fantastic piece of hitting by Leah Hanks. Again, making the adjustments, getting that barrel on top of this ball, a pitch that's working its way up into the zone. And she levels out her barrel, takes it straight to it, hits it right into that left center gap, and able to leg that one out for a double. So sweet. And Clark were retired, and then Hanks able to keep the inning going with that double, and that brings up the designated player, Karina Gaskins. Gaskins trying to follow up from a terrific freshman campaign where she saw all conference honors, fouls that one back. She's a batter that coach Deanna Gump says is just so powerful. She can do so much damage, and the ball just sounds different coming off of her bat. She's somebody who squares up the ball very consistently, and a great opportunity here to get her team on the board. It's power versus power. Madison with a powerful pitcher of Rogers in the circle. And very close on that pitch. Call the ball. That one's a tough take, and you can see that Gaskins is actually sitting back off of the plate a little bit. Rogers trying to jam her inside and goes right back to that pitch yet again. It's another good looking pitch. Something that's in the river, even on the chalk line, is really hard for batters to get solid barrel to, as you can see on that foul ball going straight back. Rogers coming in and working her way back even in this count. This one lifted into the outfield over the right center wall, and it's gone. Last year's home run leader for the Fighting Irish delivers one right here to get Notre Dame on the board. Her second of the season for Karina Gaskins. Softball is a game of adjustments, and we're seeing Notre Dame adjust early in this game. The last two pitches, Ashley Rogers came inside to Gaskins, and she decides to go on this pitch on the outside half of the plate, and she makes her pay, gets her barrel straight to it. She knew it as she's on her way down to first base that that is going to get the fighting, the fighting Irish, Irish on the board Irish. early here Number in the first two, inning. Sarah well, this is a group who has seen much improvement, not only within their conference, but also on the national stage as well. And you got to get that home run chain after you round the bases. <laughs> oh, I love it. And I love the exchanges, not of course, not just, of course, of the home run chain, but also the conversations that these batters are having. As soon as they leave the box, they're going to their teammate, telling them what they saw, what adjustments that they needed to make. And I think that's why they were able to do it so quickly here in the first. You think back to Abby Sweet striking out on that rise ball, and ever since then, they've been making adjustments to force Rodgers to bring that ball down into the zone. Making contact on that line out to short from Emma Clark, and then Leah Hanks was able to hit a gapper before Gaskins saw the last ball leave yard. Sarah Gins now up to the plate, and I love everything that comes along with sports in general as this one has popped up. That chain will be worn around the neck of Gaskins proudly, but only for a short while as that ends the inning. Notre Dame with a 2-0 advantage. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. Well, Karina Gaskins putting Notre Dame on top, lifting the first ball out of the park in this St. Pete Clearwater Elite Leading Invitational 2022 nine, edition as Alexis Holloway, the two-time team captain in the circle for Notre Dame. Holloway, a veteran on this Notre Dame squad. She's going to work the ball up, down, and off speed. She throws that change up early and often. So Tennessee's going to have to do something to make timing adjustments on that pitch. Timing this one nearly perfectly. It's Kiki Malloy. First pitch, first swing out of the park. OK. Now All that's right. what we were waiting Kiki for. Malloy. How about the response by the Lady Volunteers? Your team goes down 2-0 in the top of the first inning, and Kiki Malloy says, you know what, first swing of the bat, I'm going to be aggressive. 
and drive this ball out opposite field. You can see how fired up she is running around the bases. Great hand pass, perfect timing to get the Lady Vols on the board. The answer with a solo shot from Kiki Malloy as Tennessee, who touted one of the top four offenses in the Southeastern Conference a season ago, was able to go yard, best hitter for the Lady Vols last season, off to a terrific start yet again here in her junior campaign. Amanda Ayala, the super senior. And lefty from the plate, ahead in the count, one nothing. Well, we saw how Malloy got it going, but this top of the order for Karen Weekly's group, really tough because you just don't have much let up with Ayala, who's had a great season. Ivy Davis, obviously a very good defender, but also Kelsey Leach, a very familiar name. That Leach name is that one is lined to right field, and Ayala legging it out for a double. She says, no, I want one more. Going for the triple slides in awkwardly, but is there safely. I would say not the most graceful slide by Amanda Ayala over at third base, but it gets the job done. Ayala is so calm, cool, and collected in her at-bats, and she takes this pitch low and inside and drives it right down that right field line. We all thought it was going to be a stand-up double, but she did not stop there. You notice how she takes a look at Coach Karen Weekly at third base as she's on her way into second. That told her, gave her the green light, go all the way to third base get another runner into scoring position for the Tennessee Volunteers with nobody away. Well, what a way to start this game, Madison, right? Fireworks off the top. I mean, we don't even have time to talk about how good these exactly. players are because they're out there <laughs> getting it done before we have a chance to say anything. No need to talk about it, some would say. You just be about it. And exactly what these players are showcasing so far in this game. Get this, Madison. Karen Johns, our wonderful statistician and brainchild around the college softball world, already tallied up four extra base hits. And we're not even through the first inning. Let's go! That was a nasty off speed there from Alexis Holloway to get in the head of the count one, two. It's a great look at that changeup. She can throw it consistently for strikes, and she's not afraid to throw them back to back and at bats. Morgan takes that one high to even the count. Player who's just gotten progressively better ever since she put on. A Lady Vol uniform at 30 RBI a season ago. Yeah, yeah. And steady and patient here in her at bat to work it back to a full count. She's almost somebody that kind of flies under the radar, but she's been very consistent for Tennessee ever since day one. And I think a lot of it has to do with her mental approach up at the plate. She's got a look in her eyes that she is focused every single pitch. Waits on that one and is able to poke it past Quinn Biggio, who was diving, and we're all knotted at two. And the patience pays off for Ashley Morgan in that at bat. Works her way to a full count, a full count change up out of the hand of Holloway. And she sits back, keeps her hands back, most importantly, to allow her to poke that ball right through the 3 4 hole to tie up this ball game. Morgan does her job. She's standing at first base for Zeta Pooney. Pooney who transferred over from Oklahoma was a member of that national championship team from a season ago. And brings over a great skill onto the field and in the lineup for Tennessee. Cut there, 0-2 to Pooney. Pooney's somebody who's only a sophomore, but yet brings a ton of experience over to this Tennessee squad. You mentioned winning a national championship with Oklahoma last year. She can bring over that information, talk about mentally what it takes to get to that point. What are some things that they need to do early in the season to get there? Got on top of that one to chop it down, but that's something where you see 
the transfer portal, which we will obviously talk a lot about, not only through this weekend, but throughout the season and how coaches are utilizing it, but how also you're taking that information that you're talking about and are able to disseminate it to kind of hope, you know, level the playing field a little bit or allow you to be more competitive when, when you know better, you do better kind of thing. And they say she went around, so that's the first strikeout recorded for Holloway. This is another changeup out of the hand. It looks low in the zone. You can see it dropping way off the table there, and it looks like the umpire called that one on the pitch. Taking another look at it, it does look like it's coming in right at the knees, drops down at the last minute. Zeta Pooney, Pooney can't believe it. That's the first out recorded here in the bottom of the first. I looked away for just a second thinking she may have gone around or something because when you saw it come off the hand, you thought to yourself, how was that a strike? It, was, it ended <laughs> it, up so low in, It did in the look glove. very low in the zone, especially where Kloss caught it back there behind the plate, almost to the ground. But I think it's that late movement of that changeup dropping off right at the last minute. But uh, I would say that Zeta Puni does not agree with that call. <laughs> And the Lady Vol Locos didn't like it either. They're sitting nearby. McKenna Gibson trailing 0-2 in the count. And Gibson, the true freshman out of Cali. Swing and a miss. And back-to-back -back strikeouts for Holloway. So after giving up that solo shot to Kiki Malloy, and then Ashley Morgan tying it up with a single to right. That's just, just a veteran back. response by, by Holloway. Coming back, not being intimidated, going right after these batters, getting ahead in the strike zone. Almost caught these past couple of batters on their heels a little bit, maybe anticipating she might work out of the zone first, knowing that Tennessee had been so aggressive early on in this inning, but she just continues to stay around the strike zone, try to make her defense work behind her and get back into the dugout. The six hole hitter, Ivy Davis, takes ball two. Ivy Davis, another one of those transfers coming in from Arizona a year ago. Defense was a focus for Tennessee, and they knew bringing in somebody like Ivy to fill in that shortstop position was going to be crucial for them. Right now, she's working ahead in the count, trying to keep the inning going. Three balls, no strikes to Davis. Four pitch walk. So two on and two out now for Kelsey Leach, the catcher. And Holloway's just got to go back to attacking that strike zone. She had a couple of at-bats there where she was going after it, getting ahead early, and it ended up working to her advantage and let Ivy Davis go on with four straight pitches. So she's got to come back here within the first couple of pitches, get a strike, get that momentum back on your side in the pitcher circle. All low and inside to Leach. Well, if that name sounds familiar, it's because her older sister, the All-American Aubrey Leach, played at Tennessee from 2016 to 2019. Now on the staff. Holloway looking in, the pitch on the way. Really seems like she's having a hard time finding the zone with her harder pitches, her higher velocity pitches. She has a ton of confidence in that change if you saw her throw it for a strike to Kelsey Leach early in the Mets at bat. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see another one coming up here. Count now three and one. Holloway, who gave up just five hits and one earned run last weekend. Sees Tennessee hang two thus far. 
And the 3-1 to Aubrey Leach. Nice change up there. She has so much confidence in that pitch. A three and one count, she needs a strike, and she goes to it yet again to bring this count to full. Full count, two on, two out. The pitch, and Leach turns on that one, it's foul. Really good aggressive swing there from Leach. Runners are going to be on the move. Another great opportunity to try to tack on a few more here by dropping something out into the grass. Beautiful morning for softball. Thus far, a great start. And waiting on that one, the patient hitting there of Leach, able to get it to go off the glove of the third baseman. And the first RBI of the season for Kelsey Leach. It's 3-2, Tennessee. Leach knew that the changeup was the pitch that Holloway could throw consistently for strikes. And on a full count, she goes to it yet again. But Leach keeps her hands back and drives that one off of the glove of Mitchell over there at third base, drops down into left field. And Ashley Morgan showing the wheels scoring all the way from second base to give Tennessee the lead. And just a quick conversation with the graduate out of Crown Point, Point Indiana in the circle with Holloway. And now Blair Boutte comes to the plate. Same situation as before, two on, two out. And the true freshman with an opportunity to get some ribbies. Claire Boutte, one of those triple threat lefties up at the plate. Coach Karen Weekly was very impressed from her fall going into the start of this season, just her dynamic ability that she has up there. When coming in for strike at 42 miles per hour registered on the radar gun. That change up coming in. It's a lower velocity change of, as you mentioned, coming in 41, 42 miles an hour. So a big adjustment that these hitters are having to make on that pitch. Tried to work the outside corner. And the home plate umpire gives it to her. One ball and two strikes. And Alexis Holloway wants to get out of the inning. Just a bit outside, 2-2. Two, two. Holloway looking to the armband. The pitch. Really nice effort again, being patient. A couple of pitches that are just barely missing out the side of the zone, working her way back into a good hitter's count here. Just got a piece of that one. Great adjustment on that change. If you can tell by the look on her face, she knows she just missed that one. You can see her let her weight sink into that front leg, but keeping her hands back so she can still make solid contact with that pitch and fouls it straight back. Ball four. Bases loaded for the Lady Vols. Well, what a women's basketball matchup we have for you Sunday afternoon between two of the top teams in the SEC, Aaliyah Boston and number one South Carolina hosting Jordan Horston in the 12th ranked Lady Vols. Our coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Now while the Gamecocks have had the best of that series for the last five games, uh, this is essentially for the regular season championship between South Carolina and Tennessee. What, what an atmosphere it's going to be at Colonial Life Arena. Dawn Staley's group versus Kelly Harper's team. So much star power on oh, both sides of the court, too. You mentioned Aaliyah Boston for South Carolina. 
Best player in the country. Oh, yeah. Card key for uh, Tennessee. Fantastic as well. Nation's block leader. Come on now. I, I see mean, you. No, I, I do like the <laughs> basketball too. Caitlin Parsons, the nine hole hitter, trying to flip over the lineup. One ball and one strike. Well, this will make our afternoon crew incredibly happy <laughs> by seeing a dog in the stands. You always have to get that when you're talking softball. And Amanda Scarborough is anywhere around. And a big swing by Caitlin Parsons right there. Somebody who's typically known for slapping, but knows she has a great opportunity to score some more runs here with the bases loaded. Goes to swing away, hit a home run for Tennessee last weekend. Really improved that power up at the plate. And Karen Weekly talked about just how much of a pleasant surprise Caitlin Parsons has been. Carried over from fall ball and then, as you mentioned last weekend, knocked the one out. Well, and she hasn't just worked offensively, but defensively as well, working her way into the outfield, typically used as an infielder in previous seasons. Waiting for that one. Pass Piggio at second base. One run in, another one plates home. And Tennessee keeps on rolling, five to two. The versatility in the nine spot to be able to turn it over, not just by slapping the ball, not just by putting a bunt down, but coming up clutch with a big RBI hit up the middle to extend this lead for the Lady Volunteers here in the bottom of the first inning. Really nice job by Parsons to turn that thing over to the girl that got it started for the Lady Balls on the very first pitch that she saw in her last at bat in Kiki Malloy. And trying to lay down the bunt. So she shows a little power and then gives you some small ball as well with that great speed. Catching everybody I mean, on the fighting We average. were just talking about the versatility in the nine spot by yeah. Caitlin Parsons, but yeah, how about well, Kiki Malloy? We know she has a ton of power, but the speed in knowing that Notre Dame knows she just blasted one out of the park in her last at bat, playing her a little bit deep on the corners, and Malloy makes them pay, dropping a beautiful bunt down the third baseline. And the base is loaded yet again. Amanda Ayala, who tripled earlier this inning. Now with the bases loaded. Still all this working with two outs. So Holloway nearly got out of the inning after recording back-to-back -back strikeouts, but since then, a couple of walks and a couple of RBI and singles given up. I think it was that walk to Ivy Davis that gave that momentum back over to Tennessee. Four straight pitches put her on base, and you just cannot give up those free passes to an offense like Tennessee because they have so much speed, they have so much power, they're going to make you pay for it. You can see that it doesn't matter with two outs. They are going up there with the same approach every single at bat, passing the bat along, and that's what's allowed them to score so many runs here early in this game. Careful here, three balls and a strike. Ashley Morgan is on deck. She tied the ball game to a piece earlier. And now the 3-1 offering. Waits and lines out to second base and that ends the inning, but not before Tennessee does damage. 30 minutes to finish out that first inning, but how about Tennessee getting on the board? First pitch, first swing from Kiki Malloy. As the bottom of the hour, Madison Shipman, Tiffany Green here with you. An extended first inning, and if you're just tuning in, it was Notre Dame who jumped on the board first, courtesy of a Karina Gaskins two-run homer. However, the bats were popping in the bottom half of the inning for the Lady Balls as well. Kiki Beloy sent the shot out of the park that we showed you going to break, and then five runs in total 
to give the Lady Vols a three-run advantage. For a pitcher like Ashley Rogers, we were talking in the break, when you have long innings like that, how does it affect you? What do you have to do to get back in the groove of it? You know, I think every pitcher is different. Some pitchers like to throw a bunch, some like to not throw at all. And it's all a matter of doing what you need in order to perform out there when you get in the circle. Of course, you're excited. Your team's putting up a bunch of runs. They're flipping the lineup over. But then you're like, oh, yeah, I got to go back out there and pitch. I got to make sure that my arm stays warm. Rogers is ahead in the count, 1-2 to Quinn Biggio. Biggio, the daughter of Hall of Famer Craig Biggio play with the Houston Astros. Quinn in her senior season and hit by the pitch, so she will take first base. That's a great way for Notre Dame to get things started here in the top of the second inning. You obviously can't get all those runs back with one swing of the bat with nobody on base, so just get a runner on board, pass that bat along to your teammate, and continue that momentum that they gained back in the first inning by making good adjustments on the rise ball out of the hand of Rogers. Jolie Mitchell, who is happy to be back in the lineup, had a thunderous return after missing the season due to injury. Last year, she hit 444 through the first five games. Both teams undefeated. Notre Dame picked to finish fifth in the ACC. This one popped up. The sun is out and shielding is Pooney and one away. Sunballs can be so tough for these defenses early on in the season because a lot of the teams, especially the ones up north, haven't gotten an opportunity to play on their field a ton, be able to practice those sunballs. And you can see on that one, Zeta Pooney using her glove and her hand to shield the sun as much as possible and was able to come up with the out over there. Very thankful for the sun. Gorgeous day and the forecast is equally as fantastic for the remainder of this tournament. The catcher, Carly Kloss. At the plate, popped up and off the net. Foul ball. Trying to catch the defense a little bit by surprise, maybe trying to lay a bunt down. Just got her barrel a little underneath that rise ball again when you're trying to get that ball down on the ground, knowing that Ashley Rogers has that up spin. You got to do whatever you can to just try to get your barrel slightly above where that pitch is coming in to make sure it goes down on the ground. The 0 2. Of course, easier said than yes. done. I have been known to swing at a rise ball or two at my eyeballs over my head. And it looks like they're going to call her for being out, out of the of box, the box okay. on that one. And because she already had a two strike count on her, that's why she's being ruled out. Taking another look at it here, really watching the feet. Looks like maybe that left foot stepped outside of that chalk line a bit as she was coming through. Better angle at it here. Yep, yep that foot stepping way across over there. It's been a tough adjustment for those slappers to make. Being taught as they're growing up to utilize that entire part of the chalk line. And the rule change to make sure that your foot is staying within the outlines of the chalk. Doesn't sound like a big adjustment, but it really has been for those slappers. When you talk about the timing of it and your footwork as you lead up and... Things are happening really fast mm -hmm. up there. So the pitcher, Alexis Holloway, up to the plate. Gio over at first base. A couple of outs reported already. Holloway with a 2-1 count. Swing and miss. The 
Well, actually, Rogers wanting to kind of make this inning, the top half of it, go by a little bit quicker. <laughs> I think for her too, it's getting back into a groove. We mentioned that long break that she had with the offense scoring all those runs, and she came out and hit the first batter. Not the way you want to start when your offense puts a bunch of runs on the board for you. So for her, it's settling back down, getting back into that groove, that same rhythm that she had back in the first inning. And ball four. Started off the inning with a hit by a pitch. Now Alexis Holloway aboard with a two out base on ball. And if you're Notre Dame, this is exactly who you want up in this situation. Abby Sweet, one of the most consistent hitters across the nation last year, led the ACC in batting average and already on a tear here in the 2022 season. Abby Sweet went five home runs. A season ago, already registered two so far this season. It looks like Coach Megan Rhodes Smith coming out to have a conversation with Ashley Rogers, just making sure she's getting back into that rhythm. Just in case you're wondering, Saturday, former Red Raider head coach Chris Beard and number 20 Texas, host number 11 Texas Tech at the Irwin Center. Our coverage starts at 12.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Interestingly enough, those two softball teams are here for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. I think Texas Tech will be taking the field first of the two from the Lone Star State in a couple of hours. We'll face off against Auburn. Big old aggressive cut by Abby Sweet there on that 2-0 count. Watch those first two rise balls go by and was hacking on that one. I, I'd say in her mind that one was going places if she made contact with it. like that one might have wow. nicked the elbow of Abby Sweet as it was coming in. You can see Rogers really working that inside part of the plate to these batters, trying to make sure they don't get their barrels extended. The yeah, and it looks like Emma it might have hit the Warren. elbow guard. Looked like it just Yeah, just barely. Yeah. And remember, as a batter, you have the right to the batter's box, so you don't have to move out of the way. So Rogers letting another Notre Dame runner get on board here. Bases juice now for Emma Clark. And a chance to cut away at this lead or perhaps grab it. Clark had that solid line drive to Ivy Davis at shortstop in her last at bat, made a good adjustment on the rise ball, and you know she's going to want to do that again here. We'll see if some of that communication that you talked about earlier, Madison, comes into play here as well as the mental log that Emma Clark has. And this one is lined just past the shortstop, Ivy Davis, and a little hang up there, base running error between the two, and safe at second base is the base runner, Abby Sweet. So a run comes across, and when it looked like Tennessee had the opportunity to get out of the inning, catching a little base running error, Abby Sweet was able to get in just underneath. Well, a wow. great swing by Emma Clark. Again, yeah. adjustment, driving this one right back up the middle, just a couple of feet to the left of Ivy Davis compared to where she hit her last ball in the first inning. But you're exactly right. We've seen a bit uh, not so graceful base running already in this game, and I'm not sure how that tag wasn't applied. It almost looked like Boutte was looking at the next out, and it pulled her glove up just enough to allow Abby Sweet to get underneath that tag. But regardless, we're still here at a bases loaded situation. Taking another look at this one, here's Ada Pooney firing it over to Boutte. 
Yeah, she just yeah, she, get, just, she gets get, underneath, and look at her positioning. She's so far out in front of second base that it allows Abby Sweet to dive in safely there. If she were hanging back closer to second base, able to put that tag straight down, I think Abby Sweet's out at two. Well, the fighting Irish are fighting here in this one. Again, a lot happening in this game early on with two outs. It was Leah Hanks who had the first hit off of Rogers, which was a two out double last inning. Now finds herself in an RBI situation. The home run hitter, Karina Gaskins, on deck if Hanks can pass the bat. I think so far in this game, what we're seeing only, what, two innings in, an inning and a half in, is that the free passes are really coming back to hurt these pitchers. You think back for Tennessee's offense, that four-pitch walk to Ivy Davis brought that momentum back on their side. And Ashley Rogers with a couple of walks and hit batters in this inning, and Notre Dame's been able to capitalize on it. Hanks. Who was consistent with her bat last year for this group, third on the team in average. And now with two balls, two strikes, and two out, moves to a full count. There's the look, the stare down, the readiness of the slugger, Karina Gaskins. to strike out, so Ashley Rogers has Hanks chasing on the corner, and that ends the threat. Ashley Rogers coming in clutch when her team needs it the most, going with this pitch on the outside half of the plate, gets her swinging and sends her team back into the dugout. Check out the upcoming games with our schedule update brought to you by Wilson. Tennessee will be in action later today at 4 o'clock against the national runners up Florida State. How about UCF with that big walk off win over Georgia? They will take the field here against Wisconsin next. And then Clemson, another ACC team, 12th ranked in the country, will go up against the Red Raiders. So many of these teams here, you know, I look at that schedule and they're all jumping out at me. Just little stats here, yes. little highlights from last weekend. It's going to be such an exciting weekend seeing all these teams match up down here at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. All these coaches wanting to test their teams early. They want to see what adjustments they need to make, what improvements they need to make going through the rest of the season. And what a better place to do it with than here with the top competition across the country all here in one spot and in February. I get the feeling that it doesn't feel like February. It no. does feel like <laughs> postseason. We've got a May, June type of feel over here, but it is still February, only week two in the season. It's crazy to think that, you know, softball is being introduced on the national stage in terms of networks, the number of games that we're seeing so early in the season. This tournament started three years ago, another great tone setter as we've talked about among the other softball classes, classics like Mary Nutter and others, but this has provided a wonderful feel. As Ashley Morgan passes it over to third base, bobbled by Jolie Mitchell, but she still is able to throw it to first base in time to get the out. But you have three teams, as you're talking about, a good recovery by Jolie Mitchell here, that one bouncing off of her glove. Calmly goes and gets it, picks it up with her throwing hand and fires it over to first base. A nice stretch over there by Sarah Gens. You know, her pitcher's loving that, being able to get a ball on the ground, get outs when you have the opportunity to get them against this Tennessee offense. We're finishing the point, though. I mean, you have that elite level competition that you talk about, highly touted teams, three of them made it to the Women's College World Series as each of these 16 teams trying to make a trek to Oklahoma City. To be playing in late May, early June. Zeta Pooney 
was there last year. By the way, taking your time. And readies the pitch. That one not missing by much on the outside part of the plate. I like that Holloway's attacking that part of the zone, knowing that Zeta Puni does stay on quite a bit of ways off of home plate. You can see her back foot is about six inches away from that chalk line, making it harder for her to reach those outside pitches. Waiting for it, gets underneath it, giving chase, and coming in is Hanks from left field to collect out number two. Another changeup out of the hand of Holloway. Another pitch in the zone, getting Tennessee to swing, and a nice easy pop up out there to left field for the second out of this inning. Again, it's a pitch that she can command in any count. She can throw it to any part of the strike zone. And she comes inside, you can see Zeta Puni doing a nice job of keeping that weight inside of her front foot, just not able to square that one up. Holloway has retired the first two batters and the meeting the order for Tennessee. Now McKenna Gibson struck out her first time up, trailing on the count. And puts this one on the ground. Great glove work from Brooke Marquez at shortstop, but not able to get the runner at first. It was hit deep into that six hole, five, six hole. A good adjustment by McKenna Gibson. She struck out on the changeup in her last at bat. So she comes up this at bat, attacking the harder velocity stuff out of the hand of Holloway. Hits this one deep enough into that five, six hole to allow her to beat that one out down to first. You're exactly right, Tiffany. A nice defensive play by Marquez, showing off that athleticism at short. You know, plays, plays like that might not mean a ton when there's nobody on base, but giving your pitchers that confidence that you can stop that ball in the 5-6 hole. Maybe the runner still gets to first base, but it could prevent a trail runner from scoring when you make those diving stops in the hole. was fouled off by Davis. Ever so important, you collect that second out, and then you're one step closer, because you remember, you know, Ivy Davis was a batter that she just needed to get out last inning, but instead gave up that walk to extend it and allow Tennessee to take the lead. And several pitches that were well outside of the zone to where Ivy Davis never really even thought about taking the bat off of her shoulder and already getting ahead here. Davis awaits the pitch from Alexis Holloway. Waiting, waiting, and it's fouled down the third baseline. Seeing a ton of smiles on the faces of these Tennessee batters trying to make adjustments on that change. If she could tell she was a little bit more on time, still way early on that pitch, fouling it over to the dugout. You can tell there's definitely some thought process in trying to get on time with that changeup in these at-bats. Trying to work that one inside, Paul, ball one. Loving the call there, too. The benefit, another benefit of having those change-ups is you get so used to seeing that 41, 42-mile-an-hour pitch coming in, so when she throws that 61-mile-an-hour pitch inside, it looks like it's coming at you <laughs> even harder than it is. One low in the dirt, the throw back to first base. And Gibson is safe. So Kloss doing a nice job behind the plate. And wanted to paint that inside part of the plate. And you're leaning back in your chair a little bit, Madison. 
my angle up here, those pitches are really close on the inside part of the plate. I like that late movement, too. She threw one up in the zone early in this at-bat, coming a little bit farther down in the zone on that one. But man, those pitches are close. Waits, waits, turns on it, and foul. Madison, you said a season ago it was Ivy Davis who entered into Knoxville to don a Lady Vol uniform on deck. Kelsey Leach, one of the two Texas Tech players, transferred over to Rocky Top. 3 2. This one lifted to left field. If it stays fair, it's out of here. And yes, it is. Ivy Davis waited and waited for her pitch on a 3-2 count. Listen out. Home run for Ivy Davis. Every single swing that Ivy Davis took in that at bat, she was learning. She was trying to get more and more on time. And on this three and two pitch inside yet again, she turns on it and just absolutely drills it over that left field wall. She knew as soon as she hit it that that thing was going to be gone. The question was whether or not it was going to be fair. And as soon as that one was ruled fair, the entire dugout erupted not just for the home run, not just for the RBIs, but the adjustment that Ivy Davis was able to make throughout that at bat, something that you can tell this offense has been working on since the very start of this ball game. You talked about the smiles and they are emanating from that Lady Vol dugout because another one leaves the park a couple on the day for Tennessee, they're up 7-3. The true freshman coming in relief for the super senior heirs, Shannon Becker out of New York. And here she is with bases clear and two outs. What do we see from Becker? Becker is actually going to throw similar to pitches to what we saw out of Holloway. She likes to work up and down in the zone, and she also has an effective changeup. The biggest difference that you're going to see is she throws a bit harder than Holloway. She brings that ball into the mid-60s. So Tennessee, yet again, is going to have to make an adjustment with their timing on their swings, be able to speed it up just a tad to be on time for those pitches out of the hand of Becker. When you talk about being on time, that's something that hitting coach Chris Malvo works on a number of different analytics as he He's breaking down swings new to this Tennessee staff, along with his wife, Kate, who's a volunteer assistant. They had two openings as Karen Weekly took over as the head coach full-time after coaching, co-coaching with her husband for 20 seasons. But Chris Malvo, you see the difference that he's made? Eight hits already in this game for Tennessee. Well, one of the greatest minds in hitting across the sport, he just looks at swings in a different way. He's looking at it from the ground up, trying to get the most power out of every single swing as possible. And you can see it in even some of the things that they do on deck. And of course, in the production that we're seeing up at the plate. But we got a great opportunity to talk to Coach Karen Weekly about the difference that he's made for their offense. And she said, to be perfectly honest, I don't even understand half of it, but I know whatever he's doing is working. He's got a couple of different contraptions and drills that he does on a regular basis, but it's all the same message every single day. The message, I'll tell you this, Kelsey Leach got it for sure. The double from Leach going back to the wall. And Chris Malvo has got something working real special for these Lady Vols. Well, I'm sure he's writing down on his notepad, fantastic swing by <laughs> Kelsey Leach right there, driving this pitch right about thigh high out there into the left center gap. I think one of the biggest things that we're seeing early in this season from Tennessee is just how consistently they're hitting the ball hard. Passing the bat one after another, making solid contact. It really keeps not just pitchers on their toes, but defenses as well. When you're constantly hitting the ball hard, hitting foul balls down the line, you know that defense has to be on their toes at all times because they know it's going to come at them with uh, some great force, we should say. And Malvo, who came over after three seasons at the University of Missouri working with Larissa Anderson and the Tigers, who made it all the way to the Super Regional, and Malvo already leaving an imprint in the early part of this 2022 campaign. 
Well, and you'll notice, too, that he's in the dugout with the offense while they're up there constantly talking to them right there, talking to Kiki Malloy, just continuing to make adjustments because you know as a batter, as you continue to do well in this game, pitchers are going to do whatever they can to try to make sure they get you out in the next one. So it's that constant mental chess game between the offense and the pitching staff to see who's going to come out on top. This one chopped softly back to Becker, and that ends the inning. So four of the nine hits for Tennessee have gone for extra bases. Two of them have left the yard, one off the bat of Ivy Davis, Tennessee on top. Are they allowed to be here right now? Not but for them. Not for, not, not for them. You know what? It's okay because if you're ingesting softball in February, it's all good. In Florida, what's up, y'all? Madison Shipman, Tiffany Green with you. And how about a new pitcher in the circle after two innings of work for Ashley Rogers? She's spelled now by the Texas Tech transfer, Texas Tech transfer, Aaron Edmondson. Well, and Edmondson's going to be a completely different look than what we saw out of Rogers, of course, coming from the left side. So again, these batters having to make adjustments. She's got a lot of really tight spin and good movement on her pitches. Very crafty out there, likes to work ahead in the count, and is going to need to do so against a really powerful offense in Notre Dame. We have seen runs put up in each inning, 10 total. And who does Edmondson get to face first? Then Karina Gaskins. See her numbers in this very young season, just the second weekend of college softball. This one high, high, left field, going back to the wall. And Parsons is able to make the catch, but I think everyone was holding their breath to see exactly where that ball would land. Off the bat, I didn't think that ball was going to go very deep, and it just kept carrying and carrying and carrying. You can see in the way that Parsons was going back to the ball, changing her, her feet as her way on her way back to the fence, but a nice job of tracking that all the way down, catching it right up against the wall out there in left field. And her pitcher is happy about that one, able to secure it. Well, we see a little wind wavering through the flags around the Eddie Seymour complex, and it's going out towards left. So it was fitting, but it, it, it just wasn't a dominant breeze, but just ever so slight. The hitter in me wants to say, if I were batting right now, I'd be aiming for the left field <laughs> fence to try to use some of that wind to my advantage. And it definitely carried that ball quite a ways. Sarah Gins, who popped out to third and now strikes out looking. Edmondson with her first K of the game. This is a great look at that backdoor curve. So she's going to start this pitch in the other batter's box, in that left-handed batter's box. And right at the last minute, it's going to curve over the outside part of the plate to the right-handed batter. Such a tough pitch for righties to make adjustments on because they think it's going to continue to tail away from them. And right at the last minute, jumps into the strike zone. First pitch swinging for Quinn Biggio. And our first one, two, three inning of the ball game. The first goose egg will go on the board. We'll move to the bottom half of the third. <laughs> 10 runs put up as we move to the bottom of the third. The 15th ranked Lady Vols have started this season red hot. And we're seeing it from the plate here today. And just think, Madison, this is just one of six games. <laughs> you wanted softball, <laughs> you got it. 
the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that is just on the schedule for today. We have a fully packed, loaded schedule throughout this entire weekend. Caitlin Parsons, who made that catch at the wall, leading it off for the Lady Vols. Parsons really mixing it up in her at-bats. We saw her swing away last inning because she had runners in scoring position, but doing it again here so you can tell she's really gaining confidence and swinging away up there. And Becker gets her to commit there, one ball and two strikes. But being able to change it up also makes it really difficult on the defense as well because you're not really sure where to play them. Do you want to play them back as a hitter? Do you want to play them up as a slapper? So you're really having to adjust as that pitch make, is making its way into the batter. Parsons looking on, 2-2, two -two. commits, strikeout. Well, we were just talking about it, Madison. So now let's share with you once more about the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. 12 of the 16 teams ranked. We're seeing a lot of familiar teams make their return here, but how about five newcomers? to the pack. Wisconsin, who we will see a little bit later, is Kayla Conwent, the 2019 Big Ten Player of the Year, making a return after a two-year absence. Well, I think it was so fun listening to these coaches and just how excited they were to be a part of this tournament as well because they've been able to watch it in previous seasons, saw how much energy was brought down here in February, and they wanted to be a part of it, so you know they're going to bring the big energy as well. We're just trying to match that energy. But you're exactly right, though, but I feel myself feeding off of the energy. I think over the past couple of years, there's a lot of things that I used to take for granted that I never will again, and one of them is preseason tournaments with this type of hype level energy from the teams, from the fans. Literally everybody is just buzzing that the softball season is back. This one sharply hit to third already there was Jolie Mitchell. And two away, and, and to further that point, we see Wisconsin, a couple of other Big Ten teams with Michigan and Northwestern. And you think about their season last year where they could only play conference games. So they're welcoming the opportunity to face non-conference opponents. They are just so looking forward to playing somebody, like you said, outside of their conference. It's almost like scrimmaging when you do it all the time. You get so used to seeing your own teammates facing your players, but getting to change it up, nothing like it. The two out single to right from Amanda Ayala, who's gone two for three today, had a triple back in the first inning. Becker off to a really great start here in the bottom of the third inning against the first two batters for Tennessee. And Ayala not really getting all of that pitch, which shows you again the movement that Becker has and the spin that she's able to put on it to get them to miss hit just enough to where that ball's not leaving the yard. Ultimately, that's the goal for her right here is to make sure that the ball stays on this field so that her defense has an opportunity to make a play on it. And Ayala able to squeeze that one through the 3-4 hole. Well, Becker is just one of those pitchers who joins the staff of a couple of Third team, all ACC selections with Holloway, who we saw earlier, along with Peyton Tidd. So someone to watch out for as the season progresses is Shannon Becker. And one thing that I think is really unique for this Notre Dame squad as well is they have three pitchers on their staff. Some of these teams, when you're looking at it, even with Tennessee, they have six arms on their staff that they can throw at any time. But Coach Dana Gump says that she really wants to develop, of course, Shannon Becker being that underclassman and when she already has two proven pitchers, but rotating those three, giving them even innings. She said, ideally, it would be great to throw each of them on a different day in a three-game series. You're seeing more usage of that again with staffs, a number of different arms. That has been a trend that we've seen over the last several years within softball. No longer one arm having to go the majority of a weekend. This one high, taking off, and not 
able to get underneath the tag in time and applying it was Alexis Holloway at second base as Kloss was able to gun down the runner. We'll talk to the Notre Dame head coach, Deanna Gump, when we return. Welcome back to the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. She's spent more than two decades in South Bend leading the way for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And now we're joined by head coach Deanna Gump. And coach, when you're thinking about the way you've put your pitching staff together, we saw Alexis Holloway, the experience, and now with Shannon Becker. How confident are you with this group, not only in today's game, but throughout the season? Oh, gosh. You know, we have three starters, and we're going to keep mixing them up until we find the right combination. And that's what I love about this time of year, because you can figure things out and what works best for this team. And, Coach, your offense made great adjustments yeah. off of Rogers. What adjustments are you looking for them to make off of the lefty out there in the circle? We just need to keep it in the zone. We do a really good job when we hit strikes. All right, thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time. You got it. <laughs> I love it. Keeping Sometimes it it's just that simple. Yep. Keeping it simple. Try not to overcomplicate things. Make the pitcher bring something that you can hit, and not just hit into play, but something that you can s square up and really hit hard. You, know, you think about the success that Gump has had at Notre Dame in terms of history and perspective. How does she rank all times wins leader? in softball and baseball history at the school. And you saw there on the graphic, second coach in Notre Dame history to have 700 or more wins. She just behind Muffet McGraw, the national champion and Hall of Fame head coach. Well, you could tell just by talking to her too. And even now, just that little snapshot, she doesn't like to overcomplicate things. Sometimes people can get too much into the statistics and the analytics, and it can almost bog some players down. But she's really worked on the mental side of the game with her team this year. She said even more so this year than she has in the past 20 years, just making sure that they're mentally prepared, not just to play here in February, but for, to make sure that they're prepared down the stretch into the postseason. And I love it because oftentimes as a coach, you're always trying to look for the angle. Where do you need to put your attention most? And obviously you think about the toll that, you know, COVID-19 and the whole pandemic took on student athletes. And yes, you want to physically do a great job and be skilled and, and talented, but also that mental approach we saw now more than ever is incredibly important. I think having been on both the, the player and the coaching side, physical mechanics are a lot easier to change. So sometimes you wish it was just a physical thing that you could go out there and tweak. Maybe it'd be something with a pitching mechanic or a, or a swing up at the plate. But that mental side of the game is so, so tough. And I think that's why Coach Gump had really put an emphasis on it in this offseason to make sure that her team was fully prepared to make it down the stretch of season. The 3-1 to Kloss. Right down the pipe for strike number two. Draws full. Again, that backdoor curve. So this is a pitch that's starting at those left-handed batters and curving across the plate. Really tough for them to make adjustments on because out of the hand, it almost looks like it might hit them and ends up coming back across for a strike. This one popped up. Calling for it is Ivy Davis from her shortstop position. Two down. Big smile on the face of Davis over there. She knows she's the one with the visor out there in the field. She said, you know what, Zeta, I got this one. Using the glove to shield that sun on that fly ball. Able to secure it for out number two. Now, you played the shortstop position for the Lady Vols. In fact, were you a visor wearer? I was a glasses wearer because I felt like every time I looked it down at the ground to field the ground ball, the visor was cutting off some part of the field so I couldn't see the entire field. I always kind of like to keep my eye on the runners as I was fielding, so I kind of had the Ayala approach with uh, the sunglasses whenever the sun was an issue. I like it. I mean, that's that's how you get all American status. Hey, but you, know you best believe you, you, you better make sure that you catch the ball if you don't have <laughs> every sort of sun blocking apparel on you. Because if you dropped it because you couldn't see, because you weren't wearing them, it was not a fun day of practice the next day. Let me tell you that. One ball, two strikes to Anna Holloway, the pinch hitter. 
in for her older sister, Alexis. So Holloway, who started three games at shortstop last weekend, at middle infield, a question mark for the Fighting Irish coming into the season. Talking to Coach Gump about what she likes or what she had seen out of Anna Holloway coming into this season is that she goes out there and she plays like all freshmen do. They just go out there, they play free, they play to have fun, they're not bogged down by stats or what's going on. They just go out there and play like they have growing up their entire lives, and that's what she loved about her. Well, it's Holloway who goes down swinging Edmondson with another strikeout. We'll talk to our head coach, Karen Weekly, when we return. Tennessee fans traveled in to the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational to see the Lady Vols take the field. Now we're joined by their head coach, Karen Weekly, and Coach Ashley Rogers got the start here. But what is the addition of Aaron Edmondson meant to your team in that pitching, rota pitching rotation? Yeah, you're seeing it. You know, she's fun. She competes. She's efficient. I mean, she's having really low pitch count innings, and that's what we need her to do, just pitch to contact, get us outs. And, Coach, how big is it for you guys to respond in the way that you did going down early in this game? But Kiki Malloy and her ability to be a game changer for you guys. You know, that's why I put her in the top of the order, because I just love her demeanor. I love her presence. You saw the fire when she hit that ball between first and second. She just gets everybody in the dugout pumped up. And I love looking up there on the board. And every time they scored, we scored. And we've done a lot of it with two outs. All right. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Go balls. Kiki Malloy, we had a conversation with Coach Weekly in preparation for this tournament. She said, I haven't coached anyone with her skill. Because you talked about it earlier, Madison, the speed plus the power. And, and Coach said that she doesn't just rely on her athleticism. She doesn't just wait for things to come to her in the game, but she attacks in everything that she does, not just up at the plate, not just defensively, but even specifically base running as well. She's always looking to take that extra base. And you can see why she's such a tone setter and a leader for this volunteer squad. Preseason All-SEC honors for the junior, Kiki Malloy. One and one to Ashley Morgan. Now ball and two strikes. And Morgan goes down swinging. So we've seen a couple of strikeouts come off the arm of Shannon Becker. Really like the way that Becker was attacking the zone against Ashley Morgan. And Morgan swings almost looked a little bit late, almost like she was anticipating seeing that off speed. And Becker able to take advantage of it, firing that ball in there up in the zone to get a strikeout to start off this inning. First pitch strike to Zeta Pooney. We saw this game get off to a roaring start. 10 runs combined through the first two innings and now pitching changes by both sides. A couple of times around in the lineup. It's slowed a bit. I think it's because the pitchers are starting to make those types of adjustments against these batters. Tennessee early in this game, very aggressive on the off speed and Becker taking advantage of it and throwing her harder pitches more often than what we saw out of Holloway. Not to mention Holloway was struggling a little bit, finding the zone with her higher velocity pitches, having to resort back to that changeup. And that was a pitch that Tennessee just attacked. And here Becker has kind of started to find her groove here in the bottom of the fourth inning, moving the ball all through the zone with that steady dose of that higher velocity pitch.
Gretchen Becker, the true freshman, earned her first collegiate start against Bucknell. Rated by some outlets as the ninth best recruit. The 2-2, two -two, and that slap. Opposite field foul. Zeta Pooney still fighting in there. Again, a pitch up in the zone, driving that one opposite field. But you can just kind of tell the swings in this inning, they're not quite getting full barrel on it. That one, even a harder hit ball down the right side, but not squaring it up completely. Waiting on it, and ouch! Popping high off the glove of Becker. And it's ruled a base hit, but you gotta think, man, that must have stung a little bit. And there's that change up out of Becker. We know she has it, we know she can throw it consistently, and it looks like Tennessee, again, is just ready for it. Driving it right back up the middle. You're right, Tiffany. It looks like it got off of the heel of her glove and popped up so high over to the other side of the field that it allowed Zeta Pooney to reach base safely. Her teammates came over and checked on her, made sure she's okay. And good thing, too, Zeta Pooney hit that one hard right back to her. Gibson, who singled and scored a run back in the second. Fouls that one back. Oh, man! Just could reach out just near our booth to try to catch that one. You can tell I'm just ready for it. I am waiting for my moment. <laughs> I've had one opportunity in the past, and I ran away from it. I'm ashamed to say it, but I ran away. So come now on. I am ready for any foul balls that come their way into the booth. Wait a minute. As an infielder, weren't you taught to run towards it? To yeah, yeah tell, it I don't want to talk about it. It was bad. <laughs> Never again. So that's why I'm being aggressive up here, up in the booth. <laughs> Reach for it, reach for it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Still working that glove hand, too. Some things just never go away. Gibson moves Pooney over to second base, but to retire. But this is the time of uh, the inning where things just like to heat up. Seven of the 11 hits have come with two outs. It really seems like both of these teams with two outs just aren't changing their approach. Sometimes you can see teams maybe look to make more contact, just put the ball in play, but both of these teams looking to hit the ball hard, be productive with these two out at bats, and they've been successful at it so far today. That's exactly what Ivy Davis did. She hit the ball hard back in the second inning with two out. Two run shot to move the score to seven to three, which is where we currently find ourselves. You know, Tiffany, you mentioned that hard ball that Ivy Davis hit back in the set second inning. It might be a bit of an understatement because she absolutely blasted this ball over the left field, and it was a long at bat leading up to it, constantly making adjustments. She was very early on her swings, early in the at bat, and just kept chipping away until she finally was able to square that one up. And uh, that one went out with a bit of an exclamation <laughs> point behind it. You felt it. Oh, everybody felt mm -hmm. it. Everybody in this stadium felt that one. Again, the big question mark was, will it be foul or fair? And this whole team erupted when it was ruled fair. The offensive display in front of a great crowd here to start things off to this invitational swing and a miss and the second strikeout of the inning. With the runner left on base, nothing pushed across. It's still 7-3. Shannon Becker, known for working the ball up in the zone, works this drop ball down in the zone to Ivy Davis. Big time strikeout. Notre Dame looking to respond here.
you love to see it. Softball fans in Florida in February. Great crowd on hand here from the Eddie C. Moore Softball Complex as it's time now for today's game track brought to you by Wilson. What's been your most enjoyable moment of this game so far as we've had a lot happening? I, I think it was early in this game. You get a home run, you get a home run, you get a home run. You know I live for the big bats up at the plate and this game has not disappointed when it comes to that. I like that channeling your your Oprah. My Oprah vibes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing my best impression. Look, look, we're going we're gonna to have all kinds of vibes from here <laughs> over these four days. Well, thus far, Abby Sweet, the impact player that we mentioned to you in the open, has yet to have the impact on this game. Struck out her first time up hit by a pitch in her last AB. And once again in this one, got a real good piece of her as she humped over and is trying to walk it off over to first base. Those lefty curveballs coming into right-handed batter so tough because you want to turn the other direction, but when it's coming in at you right there at the gut almost, hard to do anything to get out of the Ooh, way. That may have been a little bit higher in the chest area, Ooh. that one. That, that one did not feel good. I think we can confirm that one, even in slow-mo, that that's a tough one. But, you know, you mentioned Abby Sweet maybe not being able to have the same impact with her swings that she usually has, but she's still getting on base in that strikeout back in the first inning, immediately went back and talked to her team. So she's still making an impact, trying to help them make adjustments back in, in her first at bat and continuing that throughout the rest of this game. You're right, and she was able to score a run off an RBI single from Emma Clark back in the second. Well, prior to that hit by pitch, Aaron Edmondson had retired the last seven Notre Dame batters to the point of Coach Weekly, who we heard from last inning. She's just been a great addition, and she's doing just what the Lady Vols were hoping for. Well, and she's such an important addition to this staff because coming into this season, the biggest question mark is, is who's going to be that next man up behind Ashley Rogers? Drags that one over to third base, and Pooney makes the lead play at second base to get sweet. And one out. Well, on Sunday, we have an American Athletic College Hoops doubleheader for you at 1 p.m. Eastern. It's number 14, Houston, taking on Wichita State. And then at 3, Memphis battles SMU. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. Secretly, as a basketball fan, cheering for Penny Hardaway with the Tigers as they've been able to put together a pretty decent season. I'd say. Leah Hanks at the plate. Good swing at that one. Good break and jump, rather on it by Caitlin Parsons to collect the second out. You know, Tiffany, throughout the game, we know we've said that the hitting fires us up, but how about the defense? We have to go back to this play that Zeta Pooney made over at third base. Look at that arm angle. Look how low it is. And because she's able to throw from so low, she doesn't take as much time to get rid of the ball. That's something that she practices. We saw them practicing that as an entire infield before the game, getting rid of the ball as quickly as possible. It almost looked like she might have surprised her teammates a little bit on that one, going for the lead runner, still able to come up with that one. But we know that Pooney was going to make an impact in the offense. But how about that defense as well? Just small plays like that make a big difference going down the stretch. And that's something that you've pointed out a couple of times, just about those critical defensive plays. Some of them looking routine, others a little bit more difficult and taking a little bit greater skill than the average eye may see. 
Well, and I think some of the best defenders in the game make tough plays look routine, and that's what Zeta Puni did on that play. You know who was great at that? Sis Bates. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the best to do it. Had such great range, especially moving up the middle. You almost saw her position herself more in the five, six hole so that she could make those plays up the middle. And again, seeing that athleticism out of Zeta Puni, excuse me, over there at third base. Those arm angles fire me up, <laughs> being able to get rid of that ball so fast. Well, the base runner taking off and able to slide into second base safely is Emma Clark. So she moves into scoring position with Gaskins at the plate, who hit that two run, two run homer back in the first. Now full count. Does Gaskins have another one in her? Foul that one off. I don't like that swing out of Gaskins, a pitch that's marked borderline on the outside part of the plate, but she's somebody who sets themselves up further off of the plate. That back foot is about six to seven inches off of that chalk line. And because of that, sometimes those outside pitches can be a bit deceptive. So on that swing, just getting rid of it so she can see another one. The lefty tries to work the outside part of the plate again. It's ball four. Really nice take there again. That pitch just a little bit lower and even further outside, able to hold back on that one to continue this two-out rally for Notre Dame here. Taking another look at this pitch. I like the location, not a bad spot. Of course, you give up the walk to Gaskins, but we saw what she has the ability to do when she puts the pat on the ball earlier in this game. So Sarah Gaines, the first baseman, has a chance to try to put some runs up for the Fighting Irish. Instead, she pops it out, and that ends the inning. So we move to the bottom of the seven. Score still the same. Triple header coming to you on the hardwood on Saturday, 6 p.m. It's ninth ranked Duke taking on Florida State at Cameron Indoor. Then we'll see the Jayhawks in Morgantown squaring off against West Virginia. Then at 10, the nightcap, third ranked Arizona hosting Oregon in our West Coast primetime game with all three of those games on ESPN and the ESPN app. Leading off with Lady Vols, number 10. Kelsey, Kelsey Leach, Leach leading it off for the Lady Vols. This one over the head of Jolie Mitchell in foul territory. And as all, I was going to say Aubrey Leach. That's a name <laughs> we had mentioned earlier, the graduate assistant for Tennessee. Her sister, Kelsey Leach, now donning the volunteer orange. But there's the sister connection in this ball game specifically. Yeah, not just with Tennessee, but on both sides of the field as well. Notre Dame with a couple of pairs of sisters on their squad. Got the Grimm sisters, Shelby and Cassidy, and first time playing together for Alexis and Anna Holloway. And Alexis actually elected to come back for her final season of eligibility to get a chance to play with her sister for the first time. I think that's so cool. One of the benefits of having that, that fifth year is having the opportunity to play with your sister. And such a cool connection. I know I got an opportunity to play with some sisters on my teams as well, the Renfro sisters, Anna, Ellen, and Ivy. There was always a special bond between them. Nobody was coming in between them, that's for sure. So you know all these sisters are just loving the opportunity to be on the field at the same time. That's pretty neat to be able to share that experience. But now, how do you feel like Kelsey likes Aubrey on that coaching staff? What, what's that like? Because, you know, she's like 
I played the game. I, I've done this, done this. Now you got to listen to me. I think you there's know? always going to be that level of competition. Ooh, is that one looks like it hits her right off of the forearm. You know, but Aubrey Leach, one of the best to do it in Lady Ball history, such a dynamic leadoff batter. You got to imagine that Kelsey Leach takes a lot of pride being able to carry on that legacy that her sister left and is continuing to leave just being a part of the staff now, but being able to wear that Lady Ball uniform. And again, we talked about the staff changes looking a little different for Tennessee this year, even though Karen Weekly in her 21st season has been at the helm, but she spent the last two decades with her husband, Ralph Weekly, the Hall of Fame coach who decided to step away from the game after last season. Well, and I like the, the aggressive aggressiveness that we're seeing out of Coach Karen Weekly, knowing that Ralph was going to be retiring, but going out and getting a big pickup in Coach Chris Malvo to be their hitting coach after Ralph retired. And so far, it's really paying off for them. I know it's still early in the season, but they have a really explosive offense. So Katie Taylor in as the pinch runner over at first base. And Lara Boutte is the lone Tennessee batter who has yet to have a hit in this ball game. And this one pops off the glove, stays in front of Kloss, but Taylor is able to move down to scoring position. Kloss able to move her feet in front of that ball, but it ricocheted off of her and went so high into the air. Taylor able to move easily over into scoring position at second base. Butte smacking that one straight down the line. Triple threat dynamic batter up at the plate with an opportunity to score another run. Somebody with a lot of tools up there. She can bunt, she can slap, she can hit away. So constantly trying to read the defense to decide what she's going to do up there. Count moves to three balls and a strike. She's aboard with a base on ball, so a hit by pitch. And now a walk given up by Becker. And we will see a pinch hitter coming to the plate for the Lady Vols, it's Riley West. And some of those pitches out of the hand of Becker not missing by much, that last one just slightly low in the zone, not getting that call Division back there. Balls, number five, Emily and I think Brand. what makes Tennessee's offense, again, so explosive is their ability to get hitters like Riley West coming off of the bench for them. She's somebody Division who came in last five, season even Riley with some big West. pinch hit at bats, driving the ball out to the outfield, and they're working for her to do that again here with an opportunity to score some more runs. We've seen a number of players come over from the left coast to go to the Volunteer State. It was West who committed to Lady Balls as a freshman in high school. And now, in her sophomore campaign, looking to continue to expand her role on this team. She's somebody you'll see work in behind the plate along with Kelsey Leach, a good arm back there behind the plate, but really known for her power on offense. There it is, Becker finding her groove, starting Riley West off with a strike, knowing the pinch hitters coming off of the bench, gonna try to get a feel for the box before she takes that bat off of her shoulder and taking advantage of that, able to get ahead 0-2 here. Gets on top of that just a little bit, pulls it foul. Wouldn't be surprised if maybe we continue to see her working the inside part of the plate, trying to induce a ground ball over to third base. That one very close to being an easy 
double play for Notre Dame. The 0-2. Oh, yeah. West chopping for that one. And Holloway bobbles it, and everybody is safe. From a defensive side of things, a lot of things happening over at shortstop. So this one hit down into the ground, and you'll notice the runner, Taylor, goes behind Holloway. And because of that, there's no interference call. That's exactly what you want to do as a runner. But it almost looked like Holloway kind of hesitated, thinking maybe that runner's going to go in front of her. And as a defender, you have to keep charging. You have to just completely ignore the fact that that runner is right there Running and attack the ball, especially in this situation, because you know your team's down by a couple of runs and you need outs whenever you have the opportunity to get them. Well that middle infield is a work in progress for Deanna Gump's group. That's she used a number of different number configurations nine, to open the season. Well, graduating last year, super seniors between Purcell and Marino up the middle, looking to replace them. They've got a couple of different players on their teams that they're kind of that they're rotating, trying to find the right fit defensive and offensive specialists. Line right to Mitchell. She tried to tag up the runner at third base, not able to do so. But one down. Nice play. Retired. Yeah, really nice play over there by Mitchell Malloy hitting this one down the line. I love how the heads up play of immediately turning over to try to get that second out at third base. And smart heads up base running again over there by Taylor to stay close to third to be able to get back in time to make sure that double play didn't happen. Layala, who has had a nice day at the plate. A couple of base hits, including a triple and a single. Good pitch there from Shannon Becker for strike two. That's a really tough location for batters to square up if she's able to get that call consistently. This one low and away and continuing to tail away from those lefty batters. A lot of times they'll have a tendency to hit it off the end of the bat, but it's a good looking pitch out of the hand of the freshman. Going to that similar area again, but a little bit lower in the zone. Two balls and two strikes to Amanda Ayala. Gets her swinging. So Becker with a timely strike out of Amanda Ayala. It's her fourth of the day. And now two away. And slowly but surely, you can kind of feel Shannon Becker starting to gain more and more confidence out there. Even her reaction after she got this strikeout, starting to get fired up. That's what you want to see out of a young pitcher in the circle, that they start commanding these at-bats, going up against a very veteran offense in Tennessee, but gaining confidence with every single pitch. And she starts off this at-bat yet again with a strike. You can see why folks are excited in South Bend for the two-time New York Gatorade Player of the Year, Shannon Becker. <laughs> Ashley Morgan takes ball one. One of those super seniors on this team already with an accounting degree currently Working on her MBA. And a little dribbler back over to Holloway, and she's able to gun it to first in time. That ends the inning. Bases left jack for Tennessee, but nothing pushed across.
Now, that video just gave me chills. The 2019 national champion against the 2018 national champion. It will close out this tournament Sunday, 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. That one's going to be such a fantastic matchup. Both of those teams just storied programs. Florida State, of course, the runners up last season with that fantastic run in the World Series. You do not want to miss that matchup. Nope, nope, nope. Lonnie Alameda talked about how her team was often reminded that they were just six outs away. Six outs is what they have used as are their motivating factor to try to get back to Hall of Fame Stadium this season. And they've got some great players returning. One of the pitchers to watch in Katherine Sandercock. Sydney Sherrill returns on the infield. Great bat as well. Well, and defensively, too, you've got Harding out there in mm -hmm. right field that continues to throw out runners trying to go to third on her. She says, uh-uh, not today. I can do it in the World Series. And, hey, you know what? I can do it the next season, too. But it's an interesting point that you bring up that they remind themselves that they were only six outs away from being national champions. I think as competitors, it's hard to look at things like that. You just think about, oh, man, we lost, but just not how close that they got in the run that they were able to make last season. A lot of people counted them out, but they were able to find their groove, find what made them unique, and take advantage of that on into Oklahoma City. An interesting change within the ACC as that conference continuing to emerge with Duke winning the conference championship, which has long been run by Florida State. Well, we even got to talk to Coach Gump about that, too. She said, I'm finally excited that everybody across the nation is just recognizing how strong the ACC is now. Notre Dame finishing last season in fifth place and coming into the season preseason pick to finish mm -hmm. in fifth place as well. But a team historically that's been dominated by Florida State, but as you mentioned, Duke and, and Clemson having strong seasons as well. And when we mentioned the story programs, obviously UCLA with the most national championships, the Bruins are going to look very different. First year, of course, without Rachel Garcia, the fantastic two-way player who graduated the Olympian. Well, but they've got some great players on that team as well. Of course, Maya Brady, a big-time power hitter for them. Megan Foremo in the circle. She, her team can, now. she can deal. And some freshmen, too. Savvy Pola. Somebody that you're going to definitely want to keep your eyes on as well. Well, UCLA made their way to the St. Pete Clearwater area in this tournament a few years ago as Quinn Biggio was hit by the pitch. And she will take first base to start off this sixth inning. That one going square off the... The hand, elbow, she's not somebody that wears a ton of those arm guards, so you know she felt that one. Dad used to do that a time or two. <laughs> that looks familiar, right? <laughs> Pinch runner in for her, as we mention one of the Grimm sisters. It's Shelby. It's for the Fighting Irish, number 25. It's been a steady Joey contributor Mitchell. in this lineup. Jolie Mitchell. Good cut by Mitchell there. Edmondson really working the outside part of the plate against these righty batters, that backdoor curve starting in that left-handed batter's box and right at the last minute tailing over into the strike zone. And that one even a bit of down movement on it as well. A good swing foul on that one off straight back. 
We saw such a strong start for Notre Dame, but there has since been a lull. The last hit coming for their offense back in the second inning off the bat of Emma Clark. It really almost seems like a, a tale of two games between both of these teams. Starting off hot, scoring a ton of runs early on in the game in the first two innings, and there really been goose eggs across the board since. And I think because of that, the, or the reason is, is because these pitchers are making great adjustments in the circle, noticing that these batters are being aggressive early in the count, kind of working the corners, trying to get ahead, utilizing those off speeds and different pitches. Two, two count to Mitchell. And it's interesting, too, because you think about it, there were a, a couple of opportunities specifically for Tennessee to score some more runs and just weren't able to come up with that timely hit. So these pitchers really settling in when those runners are getting on base. Making contact into right field, flying out. And the runner will go back to first base. Well, talking about some of those players to watch, we featured Abby Sweet in the open. The impact that she can make across college softball. Second team All-American last season. We'll see Maya Brady, as you mentioned. Janae Jefferson is also here. Lexi Blair and Haley Busby. I mean, each player you can get excited about and you can kind of list a profile or resume of what they've been able to do thus far in their careers. You know, I was just thinking that I'm looking at each one of them going, oh, I'd love to watch her, love to watch her. These are these are the players that you definitely want to keep your eyes on as the season goes on. Somebody like a Janae Jefferson, just so dynamic for Texas and so consistent. That's what I love to see. And you know, Lexi Blair for Michigan is looking forward to playing an out of conference schedule this year to take her talents across the nation. Jefferson being named to the U.S. national team as a member of the silver medal winning Team USA. Yeah, that consistency and athleticism being recognized on an international stage. Congratulations to Janae Jefferson. Ken Erickson will be coaching his USF Bulls this weekend. The national team head coach. Well, it's actually now Heather Tarr. Oh, now it is will, Heather Tarr. She will be here as be well. Yeah. Yes, yes. You were just leading <laughs> you. into that. I yep. was. Thank you. Thank you, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> A ton of the best of the game are here this weekend. Another reason why this tournament is just so spectacular. I mean, you could literally go through like each team and you say, oh, yeah, Bailey Klingler. Oh, yeah, Gabby Plain. <laughs> This tournament is a tournament that just keeps on giving. Almost like Aaron Edmondson continuing to give that backdoor curveball to these Notre Dame batters. The Tennessee fans definitely wanted that one called for a strike, and it was a, it was a close one in there. And when you don't get the call the first time, why not just go right back to that pitch, just slightly more <laughs> over the plate for the swing and the miss. Just run that back. It's now 2-2 two, two to pinch hitter. Miranda Johnson. Johnson, who's hit better than 500 so far this season. Driven in six runs. that one off. There's been so much buzz about this tournament. Of course, it's making its return after a couple years off, and then the buzz around the stands. I mean, just consistently hearing cheers and oohs and ahs and claps. It's, it's nice. And Edmondson wins that one and the glove comes off the hand of Ivy Davis. But the runner is safe at second base, so Shelby Krim just does a little uniform adjustment. But let's look at that again. Kelsey Leach all over it, firing it immediately down to second base. And I was wondering how that glove shot so far out into the dirt, and it almost looked like it hit 
the back of Shelby Grimm as she's sliding in, taking another look. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Looked like Ivy Davis was reaching for the ball and that momentum that Shelby Grimm had in her slide kicked that glove all the way out, almost into the grass over there. Either way, Grimm able to make it over there safely into scoring position. Alexis Holloway back at the plate. Her sister Anna was the pinch hitter for her back in the fourth. Correction, that is Anna. She was inserted back in the fourth for her sister Alexis. <laughs> Looks like Kelsey Leach going out to have a conversation with Aaron Edmondson, who's fallen behind 2-0. Important battery connection here because these two played with Texas Tech last season and so they have familiarity over the last few years and now they bring that over to the Lady Vols. And I think you're seeing one great example of the how important the relationship is between the battery, knowing what your pitcher needs, when she needs it. And Kelsey Leach in that moment felt like she just needed a second. Hey, refocus, regroup, stick back to that routine. And whatever she said out there in the circle worked because she came right back with a strike. It's not like a timeout where a coach draws it up, but that's exactly how you would say it. Oh, that's exactly the outcome that they were looking for this pitch really close, but called for a ball. Well, and it really takes some, some time to, to create that relationship between the two. This one just missing, but even still communicating right after this pitch was called a ball. You could see Kelsey Leach communicating that she liked where that spot was. This one smacked by Holloway in the left field and trailing to her left was Parsons. To get out number three, that ends the inning. And coming up third when we come back, it's Ivy Davis who's due up. Remember, she blasted one out earlier. Welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Gorgeous Thursday. Now afternoon and newcomers to the tournament, the Badgers from Wisconsin coming up near the top of the hour as they will face off against UCF right here on ESPNU. That's what's so cool about this tournament is that you will be able to witness softball all day long. Like, it's like eight hours plus coverage on the linear network. Then you can also check out the ESPN app, ESPN Plus, ACC Network, SEC Network, like you name it, it's there. It's there for you. So basically you're saying if you have a screen in your house, you better get ready to use it throughout yes. this entire weekend with all the softball coverage that we have going yes. on. Yes, and I'm encouraging not just screens, but multiple devices, people. <laughs> <laughs> the grounder over to short. And Pooney is retired. Good way for Becker to start and off this inning ball. with a nice easy ground ball to a freshman back there behind her. You know, we saw Holloway make a mistake earlier in this game, but I think it's so important for freshmen to learn from those mistakes and grow. And we even saw her get a similar ground ball with a runner coming up behind her, and she was able to charge it and make the play look easily. Those are the types of adjustments that coaches want to see out of their freshmen early on in the season. Speaking of freshmen, how about this incredibly talented freshman class that college softball offers up this season. There's so many freshmen that yeah. have made a statement mm -hmm. in just weekend one. And yes, I know that it's early. As the runner is safe at first popped off the third baseman. And here's Ivy Davis, who we tease going to break the pitching. 
selection here and playing off of things. Well, and Ivy Davis, a veteran hitter in this Tennessee lineup, seeing a ton of different pitches coming in at different speeds, and you could just see swing after swing, she was getting closer and closer to being on time. That one a change up out in front of it. This next one, she is all over that fastball coming inside. So much pop in her bat. Somebody that had 16 home runs last season, and she's carrying that explosive power up at the plate on here into this 2022 season. That's at number 15, Ivy Davis. And Davis kind of fisted it off the inside, jammed, and is popped out. So all the buildup and now two away. Well, the freshman out there in the circle taking advantage of the fact that Ivy Davis is a very aggressive hitter up at the plate. Anna Fox over there at first base, pinch running for Tennessee. But knowing that she was going to be aggressive on those pitches, specifically on the inside half of the plate, brings that one over the chalk line, gets her to swing, and a jam pop up to the infield is exactly what you want if you're Becker. Fouls that one off. We were getting into the conversation about freshmen, but also the number of experienced players, fifth year seniors, super seniors, graduates that are returning to the game as well make this such a compelling season. And you can't, I can't help but wonder if that mix between those veterans, those graduates, those fifth years with those freshmen is what's helping them step into the season so seamlessly. A lot of times you're going to see a ton of those freshman mistakes or. And that's a veteran swing there from Kelsey Leach. And Leach is able to bring home Anna Fox, who slides in underneath the tag in time. Close play at home plate. But Tennessee plates are on for the first time since back in the second inning. Again, a veteran versus freshman matchup. Kelsey Leach being aggressive yet again on this pitch and able to get her barrel out in front of it. That's what allows her to hit it hard down that line. But you're exactly right, Tiffany. A very close play at home. Anna Fox coming all the way around to score to extend Tennessee's lead on that hit by Kelsey Leach. Blair Boutte. He's had a couple of walks today. But again, that blend, that's why you that's why I think between you see Leach, a graduate, you've got Boutte at the plate who's a true freshman, learning from, watching the good practice habits of those seasoned players makes a difference. Well, you know those conversations were happening all the way back in the fall to try to help prepare them for the spring and going down the stretch. The season is such a, a, a mental hardship as you get down the stretch because it, it, you get tired, you get sore, and figuring out ways to move beyond that and still be able to perform your best when it comes time for the postseason, those are the types of things that these upperclassmen and graduates in fifth years can pass on to the freshmen before they even set foot on the field in February. And I think that's one of the big reasons why we're seeing these freshmen just explode off in the start of this season and look very confident in what they're doing as well. I can't help but think about Oklahoma's Jordy Ball and that performance that she had against Oklahoma. She did not look like a freshman out there at all. Against UCLA. Well, there is a base hit from Boutte, and Boutte was able to drive in a run. So everybody now that started this game for Tennessee has a base hit just passing the bat along. This is 
not a bad pitch out of the hand of Becker. This one off of the plate on the outside part of the strike zone, tailing away from Boutte, but she just takes her hand straight to it. Doesn't try to do too much, doesn't try to pull it down the right side of the field, just pokes it out there into left field to yet again extend this lead for Tennessee. Finds themselves up 9-3 here in the bottom of the sixth. 13 hits now for the Lady Vols to go along with nine runs. It looks like they're going to go ahead and put a ball on the batter. Could be a couple of things. I'm not sure if that was time, not her, her not releasing the pitch in time or getting set and then coming back apart. But either way, the home plate umpire rules that one. Ball one, and there's ball two down there in the dirt. And that allows Boutte to advance 60 feet closer. Things trending in the wrong direction as Shannon Becker, who came in relief for Alexis Holloway, has done a really nice job in the circle, but roughed up for a couple of runs here in the bottom half of the sixth. But really another great learning experience for the freshmen out here in the circle, just knowing that when you're going up against an offense like Tennessee, you cannot take a pitch off. And even right there, that one just barely missing outside of the zone. If the pitch before was a little bit closer, you might get some of those calls from the home plate umpire. But you have to stay around that strike zone the entire time. So again, those last two pitches not missing by much. But because that one down in the dirt was so far out of the zone, it makes those ones look like balls. As well. Number nine, Kiki Malloy. So Kiki Malloy back to the plate after that walk to Caitlin Parsons, runners at the corners. And speed all the way around yeah. as well. So I would not be surprised if we see Parsons take off here on the first or second pitch of this at bat to try to get two runners into scoring position for Kiki Malloy. And just to remind you, this is how we started off the ball game, first pitch, and Malloy says goodbye. Just the response from Kiki Malloy. Her team goes down 2 nothing in the top of the inning, and she says, you know what, I'm a leader on this team. I am a veteran with experience. I'm going to go up and try to get this momentum back on our side as quickly as possible, and what better way to do it than to knock it out over the fence, opposite field. Malloy, who is the daughter of former Patriot, Lawyer Malloy, won a Super Bowl with New England, and also mom, excellent athlete as well, who was a track star at the University of Washington. So Claudine Malloy had her own prowess, and then sister Amira played for the Huskies softball team. that we're in run rule territory here in the bottom of the sixth inning, eight runs after five. So if Kiki Malloy were to come up and send one out of the yard here, it would end the ball game. Taking all the way, three balls and a strike now to Malloy. You know, I was wondering, is she gonna get the green light on the 3-0 count here? And I'm sure she wishes that uh, she might have taken a hack at that one. The offering from Becker. Foul back, three and two. Malloy, who was an offensive leader for the Lady Balls last season, has started out this weekend Sharp. She started the game with a home run. Can she potentially end it with one? Nice pitch there by Becker, keeping her off balance. Malloy being aggressive on the past couple of pitches, and Becker noticing that coming in with that nice off speed. 
If you're Becker here, you're just trying to do whatever you can to get a ground ball out, try to get out of this inning to give your team a chance to come back in this ball game. The walk to Malloy now bases loaded for another dangerous hitter in Amanda Ayala. Next batter from Lake Ross, number 13, Amanda Ayala. Ayala, somebody who's known to be very patient up at the plate as well. So if you're Becker, you just got to do what you can to attack the strike zone here. Your defense has a play at any base in the infield. Try to roll up a ground ball, get out of this inning. Sharply hit foul off the bat of Ayala. Talking about making the ABs count for Ayala. She's in search of her first ribby of the season. You're Chris Malvo. You have to love the way your team has come up swinging. They've getting, gotten good cracks at it and been successful, especially in two out situations. I think if, if you're a coach in this situation, being picky, it's really those, those goose eggs on the board from innings three to innings five. In those innings, they had some opportunities to put some more runs on the board, just weren't able to come up with that timely hit, but able to kind of change things around here in the bottom of the sixth inning, putting a lot of runners on board, a lot of pressure on this defense, able to make something happen. Here's Ayala's chance, the Lady Balls today, one for five with the bases loaded. Ayala, this one in the shallow, a great dive by the center fielder. Sweet just couldn't get to it in time. And Malloy may have thought that it was an out, some confusion on the base pass, or did two come in to score? Oh, they Definitely scored two. Scored two. Oh, yep, that's yep, the that was the ball game. All right, there we go, folks. <laughs> Definitely a walk off there for Tennessee. What a great explosive outing by this offense. Again, we know that they've been able to hit the ball consistently hard all last weekend and came off with a big win here to start off this weekend as well. This went off of the bat of Amanda Ayala, dropping that one out into center field and heads up base running by Caitlin Parsons to know, hey, I am going, there is no stopping me. We are ending this ball game right here and getting a big run rule victory to start off this tournament.